Many thanks to Squarespace for sponsoring this week's video. Honestly been a colossal struggle for me over the years and what I found to be the most difficult aspect of it is that it took me the better part of six years just to realize I was doing this. But I, I've got a real quick question for you though. What type of lens was the very first you purchased for landscape photography? Was it a wide angle, mid range or telephoto lens? Leave me a comment below and let me know your answer. And the reason I ask this is that it seems the, I guess the general consensus, consensus is that a wide angle lens is the very first lens one should purchase for landscape photography. And I know it's certainly the first I purchased. And when you have a wide angle lens, you photograph with that focal length in mind, which often leads to creating a incredible grand landscape images. And that's great when the conditions support such an image. But super colorful sunrises, sunsets, and the optimal conditions for sky dependent images don't come around every day. And the odds that you get these epic conditions at the exact moment you're out at an incredible location with camera in hand, well, those moments are few and far between. And, and when I first got into landscape photography for many, many years, I would go to a location and I would, I would create a series of images that look like this. Just the same composition over and over and over and over. And it almost looked like I was taking a, a, a time lapse. I would just create these same photographs over and over and over again. I would become so fixated on one single composition and I never wanted to stray away from that composition because I was afraid the conditions were gonna get incredible. But as you can see, there's literally nothing happening in any of these images. The sky is completely boring. There is no real interesting light. The light does come towards the end here, but, and this is the final image I was left with, but a very boring sky. And that's kind of the problem with wide angle lenses. If you're using a wide focal length for landscape photography, it's going to be very difficult to create an image that doesn't have a large portion of your photograph consumed by the sky. So when the sky isn't cooperating with you, you're gonna be left with a photograph that looks just like this. And it's okay, but the overall composition, it's, it's really lacking. And what's such a shame is that there was so much going on in this scene. There was so much um, interesting details that it could have been captured, but I was so locked in on creating the, my, my wide angle, my epic grand landscape photograph that I had complete blinders on as to everything else that was transpiring around me. Everything that was happening in the distance, the small details, the things that were happening on the ground, I became so locked in on what I was doing. So the problem that I was encountering is that I was becoming very one dimensional with my photography. I remember a few years ago, I was reviewing my, my Instagram grid actually, and I'm looking through it all and I'm like, this, this is all the same style of photography, Mark. It's all these grand landscape photographs. And, and a lot of them I'm very proud of, but it was just the same thing over and over and over again. And I felt got to the point to where I felt like I wasn't being productive when I was on location, because honestly, one out of 10 times, I would get the conditions that I felt were conducive for a grand landscape photograph, those incredible skies and incredible atmosphere. And it just didn't happen too often. And I would create sets of images that look like this right here, the same thing over and over and over again, and just the hopes that the conditions would immediately just out of nowhere get better. So the, the goal that I had a couple years ago that I came up with was that I wanna be able to create something exciting regardless of what the conditions are. If they're, they're great, if they're um, you know in an, an incredible sunrise or sunset, I can create those types of photographs that have the sky that consumes a large portion of the photograph. If, the, the, if it's a bluebird sky and there's no interest in the sky whatsoever, I can create something else. If there's no light, I can create something. No matter what the conditions are, I wanna be able to come away with something that I find is exciting and something that inspires me. And that's kind of where this goal came from, to create something regardless of what the conditions are. Because personally, I think that is the most productive way to uh, to be a photographer. At least that's that's kind of a lot of my, my corporate background coming back, just trying to be as productive with my time as I possibly can. So the solution that I came up with, one of the things that has greatly helped me over the last couple of years is to look for interesting light. So when you have your wide angle lens on and maybe you're, you're hoping for that grand landscape and you're getting those conditions like I showed you just a moment ago where there's just really nothing exciting going on in the sky. Instead of just finding that composition you like and sitting there and hammering away at that composition throughout the entire sunrise or throughout the entire sunset, maybe pause a little bit, take a step back from your tripod 
and just look around for interesting light. And it seems like this, I think, are very, very exciting now. Just looking for these little puddles of light. And what's interesting about this is when you remove the color from the scene, you're really just focused on the luminance, the little dappled pockets of light. I really like both of these photographs, but I think when you remove the color, it really just helps you to focus on the light itself. But looking for areas of contrasting light. This is another great example of this where there's really nothing going on in the sky here. I really kind of like this kind of classic shot of, uh, of Half Dome but the sky is just not conducive for this at all. So instead of me just sitting here hammering away at this, hoping that the sky imagi um, magically just starts popping off and the colors are explosive, it never materialized. So I put on a longer focal length and I started looking for areas of contrasting light and I came away with this right here. And this scene is just a super telephoto shot of this area right through here. And for me, I think this is much more interesting. You've got the nice uh, uh, contrasting of the, of the warm highlights against the cool shadows. And I really like the story that's being told here. Plus you can see a little bit of these trees at the base of this kind of cliff face that really adds a lot of scale to this photograph. You can see all of these little trees here, and these trees are massive, and this adds a lot of scale to the photograph versus this right here. So looking for areas of interesting light. This is just an area of, of a, a local lake in my area. <laughs> that was a lot of areas in, in one sentence but just looking for dappled little puddles of light because contrasting light is absolutely a beautiful thing to find when you are actually looking for it. But I personally, I don't want to speak for anyone else, I became so fixated on one thing, my wide angle composition, and that's all that I could th think about whenever I would create that, or I would, uh, I would identify that composition. I would just get so locked in on that to where I would have blinders on to everything else that was going on around me. So looking for areas of interesting light and something else that I think is really helped me out. And before I jump into this next thing, I do just want to say that my photography for me personally, in my opinion, has never been as good as it is right now. But most importantly, even beyond that, is that I'm having more fun with my photography than ever. I feel like I have increased my skill set over the last couple of years dramatically as to of what I did in the prior six or seven years before that, just by focusing on the other things that are happening around me. And I now feel like I don't have to be so locked in on weather forecasting or, or cloud forecast. I always pay attention to the weather, but I used to get so fixated on the clouds. You know, what are the high clouds doing, medium clouds and low clouds, because that's a great way to predict the likelihood of a great sunrise or sunset. I really don't pay a whole lot of attention to that anymore because I now feel confident that I can create something in just about any conditions that I have, uh, that I am faced with. So I'm having more fun with my photography than ever. And I personally feel that that is the, the most important part of it all, because if you're enjoying what you're doing, you're naturally going to create something beautiful. You're naturally going to improve. You're naturally going to create better photographs, the more fun that you have. This is a scene right here. Just a little bit of an interesting light right through here. Not, not, not crazy light. The other images, the other examples had very obvious contrasting light. This scene doesn't. This is very soft light right through here, but it just happened to be where these two people were uh, walking and it adds a lot of scale to this photograph. So looking for the interesting light, I think is one of the tools or one of the techniques that has really helped me to kind of remove the blinders and start to pay more attention to the things that are happening to the left, to the right, above me, below me, behind me, to really kind of catch, to soak in the overall environment. Now, looking down and thinking small, these are also things that I've really paid attention to, looking for pockets of light, thinking small and looking down. I can't tell you how many times I just look this way. I look at eye level everywhere, but paying attention to what's happening beneath you. This is a, an image from, from Cancun, Mexico, of all places a couple years ago. There was uh, nothing happening in the sky whatsoever, which is the reason why I wanted to exclude it. I used a very shallow depth of field, got very close to this tiny bit of seaweed here, but just zooming all the way in. And I just loved how you could just pick up all of the detail in the sand right through here. And I love how that focus just kind of falls off to the incoming tide in the background. Another example here of just your standard, just kind of autumn leaves, just resting against a, a, a rock. And I just love the, the color contrast here. And this is an image from a couple weeks ago, one of the only photographs I've ever taken of a mushroom that had these incredible little flies or, or gnats, I'm not exactly sure what they are, on top of the, uh, of the mushroom, but getting extremely low to it 
created this kind of glowing effect of the light hitting the mushroom. You can really catch and see a lot of that detail beneath the mushroom. So getting very low and thinking small. And it's just little details of sand. You know, as the tide would recede, it would create all these incredible patterns in the sand and just zooming in and just isolating it, putting a nice square crop on it, minimalistic style of photograph. And then not always looking down has to be literally like standing on the ground. This is one of my very first drone shots I took years ago with the first drone that I ever owned. There's nothing exciting about it at all, but it's just a perfectly, well, it's not perfectly circular, but it's a very interesting little island. And here's another example from my trip to Iceland a couple weeks ago. This is a geothermal hot spring. And when you look at it, it actually looks like it could be massive, but in all honesty, it was tiny. And I just took a drone and just hovered it maybe a foot above this little hot spring and just captured a photo of it. So just thinking completely outside of the box, thinking differently from the standard perspective that we all see at eye level. So, and here's a, a good example of this right here as well, where, you know, this is a, a wide angle lens. This is a, a raw file from a trip to Moab a, a few years ago. I thought the, the atmosphere was really nice. The clouds kind of, and the fall moving in and out and kind of interacting with these cliff faces was very interesting, but just putting on, well, I should say before I get to that point, I wasn't really happy because I, these images kind of lost a focal length, or lost a focal length, lost a subject matter, a focus point, if you will. But by putting on a super telephoto lens and zooming in and capturing this right here, this is one of my favorite photographs I've ever captured. And it's just this area right through here. But the composition started right here, got a little bit tighter, and ultimately ended away, ended up with this right here. So just kind of thinking a little bit differently, looking down, thinking small, and focusing on what you love, that past example was a perfect example of it. What I loved about that scene was the way the fog was interacting with the mountains. So instead of trying to capture all the fog interacting with all the mountains, zooming in and isolating one specific area created a much more focused and a much more clean uh, photograph, in my opinion. Now, the last piece of this is focusing on, and this is something that I talk about all the time, but focusing on telling a story. And a fantastic way to do that is by using storyboards, creating a set of images that tell a story of a location versus just one, because that is what I always used to do. I would always come away with about a hundred versions of the exact same photograph, but it was just a wide scene of the entire location in its totality. And this is a good example before, or I've shared this image before. This is a uh, this is a raw photograph of a uh, an area in Iceland, and there's just a lot going on here. I love so many different interesting elements of this photograph, but when you look at the, the entire scene you don't really know what to pay attention to. But by putting on a long lens and focusing on the peak right here, I love the uh, the glacier at the top right through here, all the detail of the, the clouds interacting and moving in and out, the, the uh, little bit of light up through here. And if I go back, it was just this area up through here. But when I came upon the scene, that was what one of the things that I loved the most about it was the peak of this mountain right through here. I also loved all the detail in the, uh, the, uh, the glacier right through here as well. And that is just this area right through here. So just using a longer lens, isolating this area to create that type of a photograph. And then once again, this is just a very zoomed in area of the, uh, the mountaintop as well. But when you, let me go back here. And if you look at these three photographs together, this creates a very good story of this overall photograph, or I should say of this overall scene, as opposed to just this image right here. So thinking about creating a storyboard, thinking about how can I better tell this story to someone who's never been to this location? And when you think about storyboards in your mind, you will automatically create more variety when you're on location. And I personally think that that, that is what is most important is coming away with some type of variety because that'll ultimately make you think a little bit different. I've got the, another example of this right here from, from Skoga Falls. Once again, kind of a boring sky. If this was marked from a few years ago, I would have just taken about 150 versions of this photograph and then came home and picked the one that I like best. But I capture this image, it's kind of boring, it's nothing too exciting, it looks kind of like a postcard. But by using a telephoto lens and just zooming into the crashing water, this tells a much more compelling story. I don't know exactly where this waterfall is. It creates a little bit of mystery in me as the viewer as opposed to this right here. And that image was just captured in this area right through here. And I absolutely love this photograph. I shared it in a couple of videos before and I'm really proud of it. It's very simplistic but I think it's a much more powerful, um, I should say, story to be told than this right here. One more version of this from the Nepali coast, which is a, this is a, a telephoto lens, capture the, these kind of razor fins of the, the Nepali coastline with this light kind of coming through and really uh, illuminating 
all of these fins. It shows a lot of texture. Then I got this one right here. This is the helicopter that I was in flying around this area, capturing these images. And then this is more of a wider shot of, of a different portion of this scene. But when you put these three images together here, hit the shortcut key N for survey mode, you get this right here. And these three images together creates a good storyboard. It tells you the, the viewer that these images are captured from a helicopter along the coastline, uh, photographing these incredible mountains. So these three photographs together create that storyboard as opposed to me just hammering away at one wide angle composition of this entire area trying to fit the coastline with the water with the mountains maybe an incredible sunset in the background this right here creates a little bit of variety so focusing on interesting light looking down and thinking small and paying attention to how you can better tell a story how you can create a set of images as opposed to creating one those three techniques have really helped me to solve that problem of becoming so one dimensional with my photography, becoming so condition dependent with my photography and improving this skill set has been one of the, the, the hardest things that I've had to do with my photography. It has taken the, the greatest amount of time. It's taken me years to get to the point to where I'm at now with it. And it will take me years beyond this to even to improve this even further. So that is the, the hard skill that I think once you begin practicing, once you become, once you become focused on the fact that you need to improve it, it's something that's going to pay off with your photography for forever. So it's definitely something that has helped me and I hope it will help you as well. Now, before I do wrap up this week's video, I just want to say a huge thanks to the longtime sponsor of the channel, which is Squarespace, who I use for absolutely every single thing related to my website and e-commerce needs. Squarespace provides a dynamic and attractive online platform to create your website. You can display your photography using Squarespace's professional portfolio designs and customize the layout and look and feel of your gallery just so you can make it your own. With Squarespace's traffic overview feature, you can track trends in page visits and views to better optimize your content. And you can even grow and engage with your customers with Squarespace's email campaign tools, which will enable you to create engaging emails that match your website with your products or blog posts and logo, just so your messaging remains consistent. So if you're looking to start a new website or possibly upgrade your current website, check out squarespace.com forward slash Mark Denny for a free trial and 10% off your first purchase. So I really do hope you enjoyed this week's video. It's something that I'm very passionate about being able to create something beautiful, no matter what the conditions are, because let's face it, when you're an outdoor photographer or a landscape photographer, we become very condition dependent. If the conditions are not great, it's a lot of times we struggle with coming away with something fantastic. And let's face it, most of us do not have the do not do not have the ability to just gallivant the world seven days a week. A lot of times, maybe we can only get out on the weekends. Maybe we can only get out once a month, twice a month at the most. We want to make best use of our time as humanly possible. And I think this is an absolutely fantastic way to become more productive when you're on location, create better photographs when you're on location, but most importantly, have more fun and have more confidence in your own photography because you know that you can create anything regardless of what the conditions happen to be. So thank you so much for tuning into this week's video. And if you did enjoy it, I have some other playlists that I'll show here on the end card that have um, tons of additional information on post-processing or composition or maybe gear related things. If you want to continue watching, definitely just click on one of these cards on the screen right now. It'll take you right there. Thanks again. And I will see you all next Wednesday. Bye.